welcome back to the White Horse Works. My name is Peter Sporer and today we're going to radio control a live steam AccuCraft Victory locomotive. So let's turn this upside down and we're going to mount all the equipment in this lower half. Two little wadges of foam help to support it and secure it in the padded frame. Now I can work with this nicely. There are two lateral cross members here. Both of these have got to be removed. A small cross head screwdriver. They just loosen off. Then using a crooked tweezer, you can just grip the true and put it in the bin. And now use a piece of card and a large flat screwdriver and just lever that off. It sort of got stuck on there with paint. So let's do the same now to this one. So both these laterals are now out. The reason we're removing this one is so I've got to drill a hole in the centre of it to support the bracket which holds the switches. Mark off the exact centre spot and then give it a ding then drill it with a 3mm hole. After drilling the hole, we then pop it back with the turned edge facing forwards. So we just use the tweezers in reverse and in it goes, both sides. Now we should be mounting the radio control batteries and equipment in this space underneath the cab. It's nice and cool away from the heat, but it has these holes. Presumably the designers had the holes there to let any water out of the cab drip down onto the track. But we don't want oil and water dripping onto our radio control equipment. So we use some small pieces of duct tape now to just seal off these holes. In the hard to get to forward chamber, simply duct this tape, stick the duct tape to a screwdriver, put it into position, and then withdraw the screwdriver. You can, of course, always expect it to work, but I'm not, so I'm going to actually put in some little bits of cloth now. Fold it over a few times, this is t shirt material, and should any water dribble through, and it'll get absorbed by these and not affect the radio control equipment. So it's acting as a moisture barrier and a moisture absorbing barrier. Now, this little fella that holds the battery is the battery support bracket and that is actually going to go through that screw hole and it's going to mount just there. Some locos have a screw mounted in there. If there is, remove it. We've provided you with a countersunk 3mm. And using your joggled pliers, you just screw the battery container now firmly into place. We now need to go to our switch frame, which is the large switch frame with an extension bracket, two side plates and screws to put it together. Onto this is mounted the on-off switch and the charging socket. It could be that yours came assembled like this. If this is how it probably comes to you, all pre-assembled, with the aid of this screw and two little screws here, we're now going to mount this onto the locomotive. First we just have to remove these two little screws. These, because I think they're made of brass and I don't like little nuts, they're not quite long enough to do the job. Your next job is with the aid of a pair of tweezers is to mount the set, pick up the servo wires and to mount them here alongside the battery box frame and have them coming up so that they'll plug into the receiver just here. Next is to take the battery and with the polycouple facing forwards Slide it in onto the tray, like that. 
And once again the wires go down the left hand side of there. Next we take the receiver and we're going to plug the two servos the correct way up, read your instructions, onto the servo plugs, servo 1 and servo 2. The receiver is going to sit here between the frames, beautiful fit. First we've got to plug on the switch frame and it's all male into female and we can of course plug these plugs onto any of those set of pins but as long as the red is in the middle and it's on the bottom I've just selected to put them in the middle because I think it's neater and now all this has just got to be neatly tucked away so the switch frame just slides into place and there's the hole in the lateral member that you did earlier and you just screw it together with a three millimeter screw not all the way we've got to keep it loose so we can make the adjustments and you can see just there there's a hole in the frame revealing the aerial on the receiver So one side, just do the other side. So much easier with a screwdriver. Then lastly, of course, we do this screw up tight at the top. And now the switch frame is complete. Now ordinarily one might say that it was complete but it's not because this is one hot little bird. A lot of exhaust gases come up from a gap underneath the firebox and flood the side tanks with heat. This destroys the servos and it boils the gas and makes it very unstable and impossible to recharge after a run until it all cools down. So we're going to equip it with some heat shields. So here are the heat shields in question. There's a lateral one that's going to go in there and there are two longitudinals either side of the boiler. We're also going to fit some soft insulation in just a second. But first we've got to put this one in there. And by careful and deft movement, without scratching the boiler, put it into place. And what this will do is to stop the hot gases coming from the firebox migrating up into the side tanks. Next we're going to fit the heat shield for the two servos. And these two cuts are for the wires and the linkages. And this cut is for the wire from this servo. So as we feed it down behind the servos we must make sure that the wires are in the correct places and there it is, it'll fit straight down and we're going to put two bolts here and there to hold it in place. And we'll just bolt this side plate into place with the little three millimeter bolts. You never do anything up really really tight, you just leave it Do the second bolt. And then when they're both in place, you give them the video strokes. Let's do the other side. There she goes. So there are the heat shields from above, hopefully protecting the electronics and the gas. To stop the free movement of air, I'm just putting a little piece of asbestos filler there. Well, it's not asbestos, you know, the, the modern equivalent. <clears throat> and that'll stop the movement of air, taking hot air to the components.
Now under the local here there's still a possibility that hot gases can flow along here and get up underneath the boiler space here so we're going to put some insulation in there. Now I could be completely overdoing this by putting this insulation down in this little space but I don't care I've heard some terrible stories of cooked electronic equipment and it's not happening to my locomotives. So we just stop the gases now going up anywhere by having that first and then secondly and lastly we got some of this asbestos sheeting it's not asbestos I know but it's it's like a loose cardboard and if that's put under there and once again that will stop any gases getting up there and now the time approaches to put the body back onto the locomotive. To see the steam test on the Whitehorse Railway, go to the next video. Bye bye.